Welcome back guys, this is Molten. I was preparing against 1903 the other day, I noticed a trendy opening which people have started to try in their games, one which I believe gives you a very novel and exciting position, whilst avoiding a lot of your opponent's theoretical knowledge at the same time. I plan to make two videos on this, starting with this really great game played in this line between Vladimir Kremnik and Laurent Fresnay from 2013. I hope you guys enjoy! Vladimir Kremnik, who is now retired from professional chess, had a reputation for being one of the most difficult players to beat, especially in the later half of his career. However, in this game from 2013, Fresnay plays a very sharp and offbeat opening which catches Kremnik off guard. So let's take a look. Before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so and tap that notification bell so you get notifications every time I upload a new video. The game starts out. 1-9-0-3, d5, g3, and here instead of going all the mainline options with bishop g4 and knight f6, black can immediately surprise his opponents with this move knight to c6. Already black is threatening to play the move e5, and white has to make a slightly uncomfortable decision of what he wants to do. If he goes bishop g2, then black will simply respond with the move e5 with a very strong pawn center. Therefore, usually here, white will play the move pawn to d4 in order to stop that. And in this particular position, black has two main moves. One is bishop to g4 and one is bishop to f5. Bishop to f5 is gaining a lot of popularity recently and we'll look at that in our second game in this line. Here instead, Fresnay chooses the move bishop to g4. After which, white has two main options. The main option here is to play bishop to g2. But after this, I suggest we continue with a plan such as queen to d7. And after castles king side, we can simply castles queen side and play very similar to what Fresnay played in the game with ideas such as f6, e5, as well as an automatic king side attack with moves such as h5 and bishop to h3, looking to trade off those light squared bishops. Instead, Kramnik chose to play knight b to d2. Here, we continue with queen d7. And Kramnik played the move h3. The downside about h3 is that white will always have to defend this pawn on h3 before he can manage to safely castle to the king side. White played c3. And here, black's plan is to push in the center as quickly as possible and eventually castle queenside. There are two ways to do this. One way is to play the move f6 first. And for example, next move we're playing e5, so white needs to try and stop that. One game continued here, knight h4. Black wanted to keep the bishop pair, so we dropped it back to e6, temporarily blocking our pawn. But after bishop g2, the bishop dropped back to f7, and then here we can see that black is going to play e5 pawn break next move with a reasonable position. Instead, Fresnay chooses to immediately go for the initiative with this pawn sacrifice, pawn to e5. Very ambitious novelty. And the idea is that black sacrifices this pawn and goes for very fast piece development. And this is an idea which um, I first learned from playing a slightly unsound opening from the black Madima gambit with the white pieces but here it's an even better version for black for example after white takes it then Fresnay can first castles queenside here a natural move for white would be bishop to g2 and we can consider the move rook to e8 looking to win a pawn back on e5 and for example after knight b3 we can follow up with bishop to e4, and possibly looking at playing f6 next move if we need to sacrifice the pawn and open up the semi-open e-file. Instead, Kremnik played the move e3. After e3, it's going to be much more difficult for white to develop since if he goes to g2, then black always has the option of playing bishop to d3. But here, Kremnik instead is looking to perhaps develop his bishop to b5. Black plays knight g7, and Kremnik chooses 
a very aggressive move in this position, uh, pawn to g4. However, in the long term, this is not going to turn out well since g4 becomes um, simply a target for black to play the pawn move h5 and really break open the king side. And here white makes another very unexpected decision, playing the move pawn to b4. It makes sense that white wants to really attack black on the queen side since um, black's king is castled there. However, the problem is white's king is yet to castle and with the king in the center, sooner or later when black manages to open up the position, um, you'll find that white's king will be in a lot more danger. However, in this position, black really needs to counter and in order to counter a flank, we have a few options either to counter on the opposite side of the board or to counter attack in the center. Here out of the two moves, um, h5 looks like the better option rather than f6. Therefore Fresne goes h5. With the idea that after b5, we don't actually move the knight, since if we move the knight we might end up losing our initiative. Instead Fresne plays a very strong peace sacrifice here, h takes g4 opening up the position and this really exploits white's lack of development in this position. White accepts, Fresne takes back and now we see that white's under a lot of pressure along these open h and g files and if the knight moves then simply knight takes e5 continues on black's initiative and is a very attractive position for black. Instead Kramnik tries a counter sacrifice with the move pawn to e6, the idea being after we take with the queen, he plays knight to d4, hitting our queen with tempo, forcing a knight trade. Here we should take the knight in order to not lose any more time. And after pawn takes, Fresne played the move bishop to e7, looking to bring the bishop into h4 and create threats of queen takes e3 next move. However here suggestion by the computer was bishop to b4 and for example after queen b3 you could play bishop takes d2, bishop takes and then bishop e4 and after rook h2 queen d6 is very strong king the rook on, on the king side which can't easily be defended and is running short of squares for example after f4 here we can simply play pawn to g3 forcing the rook to go to g2 and then we can simply take the pawn h3 with a decisive attack. However, this is a computer variation obviously and not so easy to see. Bishop e7 makes perfect sense. After bishop g2, Fresnay simply took the pawn attacking the bishop. Bishop goes to f3 and now um, with the threat of bishop g4 coming next move, Fresnay plays a very natural response bishop to f5, looking to support the h3 pawn by pushing the g5 pawn up the board. Queen to a4 is played, but here we simply play move king to b8, defending the pawn on a7. There's no need to push any of our queenside pawns since that will only create um, further weaknesses and squares for white to attack us. Kremnik played bishop to a3, we don't want to trade off pieces in this particular position since the bishop can be a very dangerous piece for white. So instead we play bishop to h4, setting up the threat as well of queen takes e3 with tempo. Knight f1 was played and now we continue our attack on the king side with g5. Here white plays rook to h2 which loses immediately, however it's so difficult to suggest a better move for white since he's under so much pressure. After g4, bishop to e2, bishop to e4 was played, and now we can see that the problem is that white can't really castle queenside since um, there's no king safety at all, and the king side is completely destroyed. Rook c1 was played. Here black played to move bishop to g2, completely tying up white's king side. The plan is to go bishop takes f1 followed by g3. Queen a5 was played. Rook c8, a very good move from black, not committing any pawn weaknesses on the queen side. Rook c3, 
And here Black found a very good combination to forcefully get his pawns across on the king side. He starts out with the sacrifice, bishop takes f2, forcing the king to take. And now he removes the defender of the g3 square by playing bishop takes f1. If bishop takes f1 then he has moves such as queen f5 check followed by g3, forcefully getting the pawns through. Therefore after king takes f1, black simply played g3. The Kremnik has no choice but to give up the rook in the corner with bishop f3, taking the rook, king e2, rook g8, bishop c5, here Fresne calmly plays the move a6, defending against all threats, and after bishop h1, finish the game off in very nice style with the move rook to g2 check, blocking the bishop in the corner and bringing the rook and queen into the attack, while at the same time white has no counterplay on the queen side. A great attacking game and fantastic win by Fresene. This is our look at the two knight c6 and bishop g4 option for black. In our next game we'll have a look at bishop f5 which is currently the more trendier choice. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.